Terrence Bud Crawford is one of the standout boxing talents of our generation. One of those unique fighters that only comes around every so often and will be talked about for decades afterward. And that's why it's so incredible that he will finally soon be facing the man who can be said to hold the exact same accolade, Earl Spence Jr. This fight is the Hagler versus Hearns of our time. And I don't think it's naive optimism to say that it is almost assured to be the same kind of iconic war. Both casual fans who like to watch two men pit their strengths against each other in the ring, as well as practitioners and diehard fans who know the advanced tactics of boxing like the back of their hands, will be at the edge of their seats from the weigh-in, up until one of these men raises their arms in victory. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the unique attributes and abilities of boxing's smiling assassin, and try to assess if Bud has what it takes to not only beat Spence, but send him tumbling to the canvas. When all is said and done, the heart of Crawford's entire style is his stellar counterpunching. He finds gutsy, risky pathways to his targets that defy convention. Rather than beat a wide punch with a tighter punch, the traditional wisdom of the high IQ fighter Crawford loves to beat tighter punches with wider ones. So while a textbook counterpuncher might intercept a hook with a jab, the straighter punch landing first because it takes less time to get there, Crawford can instead counter a jab with a hook. This could potentially be very bad news for Spence, who tends to build an advantage by piling on using tighter, crisper shots. Crawford can get away countering with these bigger, harder shots by using risky footwork and head movement. For instance, he could counter a straight cross with a looping overhand because he steps in and slips his head towards his opponent's cross. He could land a large hook against a tighter hook because he cheats the angle by stepping with his punch, shortening the distance. He can counter a lead hook with a rear hook by changing levels and stepping outside. Crawford gets caught during a number of these risky counters, but because of these angles, he gets nipped with small to medium powered punches, while his opponent gets obliterated with a full on committed power blow. But to be fair, Crawford does tend to take a lot of shots flush during the first few rounds, as he's finding and timing potential counters. This could be very good news for Spence. If Spence can get in a lot of big shots in the early rounds, then maybe Crawford never gets a chance to find those openings in the first place. This is in part due to the nature of Crawford's guard. Crawford can use Philly shell and long guard tactics, but whether he keeps his guard high, mid, or low, he tends to have it loose, his hands far away from his body. This gives him a clear line of sight and lets him attack from multiple angles. There is no doubt in my mind that he is aware of every opening that each guard creates and knows a way to counter each of those openings. But it can take Crawford a while to dial those in. Crawford tends to scout out potential openings before landing knockout counters. And you can check out my earlier video on him for some specific examples of him finding openings over time. Bud of course uses more traditional counters too, like pulling a jab to return a lead hook or slipping a jab to land an uppercut. Spence is far less likely to fall for these. But when Crawford does land with a big shot, his killer instinct takes over in a pretty unique way that's reminiscent of the great marvelous Marvin Hagler. May he rest in peace. Really rocked him another right hand. He's got him in trouble. He's on the ropes and that's it. Amani knocked right through these very loose ropes. Like the marvelous one, Crawford will use a stance switch to change angles to take a superior position where he can punch, but his opponent can't. Here's a very similar comparison, with the young Crawford staying in place to turn shift as his opponent flees, shifting from orthodox to southpaw, just as Hagler made a career out of. Another devastating tactic is to take his pullback hook and add a shift to it, luring his opponent into chasing and then suddenly driving them into a trap. Crawford also knows exactly when to shift forward to a new stance to add power to that shot. Most of Bud's shift forward punches could have still been landed from the other side, but he steps into them anyways. The results speak for themselves. It was a good shot. It really was more of a jab. It was, it was a jab, hard. but did you see his legs buckle? 
While both Spence and Crawford prefer to fight Southpaw, Crawford seems much more comfortable with extreme angle changes. Whether this proves the key to victory, or a costly mistake as Spence follows him at a tighter angle remains to be seen. Something similar between the two is that Crawford loves to target the body. Right hook, that's the shot that Crawford tried to Oh, good body right shot hook. by Crawford. Trying to set the right hook up. Goes to the body again, and then double. Bud's preferred method is to use body shots to counter headshots on the same side. Very unusual. Since the body shot leaves that side of Crawford's head, the thing the opponent is trying to target at that very moment, unprotected. But Crawford smothers, rolls, and rides these to stay safe. Alternatively, Spence's body shots tend to be more targeted around close range wrestling. And wrestling and dirty boxing could very well determine the upcoming fight, along with jabs. One will determine who dominates at long range, the other at close range. And we'll look more at these two elements in my new breakdown of Spence coming soon. For now, I would suggest watching some iconic fights from the golden age of boxing in order to get ready, because I have a feeling this fight will be on that same level. If you want to learn more, you can check out my books on power, footwork, and head movement, linked below. From the modern martial artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.